Welcome to Azure Infinite Podcast. This is your host, Drake Fushime, also known as Hikata Kashime around the Azure network. Uh, here with us today is our hosts, Glitch Symphony, Nora Swift, and Mystica Rodica from the Azure Infinite Hi. community. Hey, hello, guys. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> <laughs> that was an excellent <laughs> opening. Uh, so, yeah, because a few episodes ago we had that, like, slow meow, and now we have a fast meow. Meow. So, yeah, now we have three meows, four meows. <laughs> We're just going to open it up with a meow. So, uh, we got a very interesting, uh, drop this morning from our letter to Producer Live, or also known as Producer Live Letter Japan, um, that is the 77th episode. Uh, that means there has been 77 updates over the years throughout the last decade. Um, slightly more than that, actually, uh, since they started the uh, 2.0 project for Final Fantasy XIV Online, uh, starting with the end of the 1.0, uh, the 1.0 uh, shutdown. Uh, long, famous story that uh, most people know by this point, but <laughs> we are in the 6.3 era patch of uh, 14, with uh, the the relaunch of 14 back in 2013 being the 2.0. So we've come quite a long way. We have uh, the 6.4 patch uh coming up here really really soon uh you know what's really funny is um we hadn't seen an official release date um but the words late may has been shared uh, this entire time and here we are mid-may so late may is pretty imminent and uh being the patches launch on tuesdays uh always always something good to remember uh there is only two tuesdays remaining that uh, it could possibly launch on that would be considered late may so um that should be very 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 soon um probably about a week to a week and a half's time and uh depending on this recording <laughs> which uh, i'm going to be editing really soon um but uh the time of this recording right now is friday it's uh may 12th right now and uh we're looking at like i said probably about two-ish weeks until we get there so um definitely do everything that you can uh while the current patch is still active uh, you might want to work on uh just building up some <coughs> of that gill there's a lot of new items they showed this morning um i think 6.4 is bigger than what a lot of people think um that's just my take. There are folks that are kind of like, oh, you know, there's too much. And then they, they complain when there's not enough. So <laughs> now, now it's like uh, we got folks who are saying there's there's not enough things to do, but too much, you know, but too much of this or too much of that. So I think what's going on right now is we're seeing uh, we're seeing the producers kind of fill in just a number of things uh, to do. We've got another relic step, another uh, splitters tool step for our crafters and gatherers out there uh, coming in 6.45 along with blue mage content and just a few other things. I think uh, new uh, criterion and uh, variant dungeon also coming out 6.5, uh, sorry, 6.45. <laughs> That's the uh, second half of the patch because they are split into two. They are split into two. Usually, a second half for, for the four or five comes about. Eh, what would you guys say? Like a month, about a month later, something like that. Uh, I do know that the difference with Savage though is uh, Savage content for the upcoming raids, which we're going to talk about here shortly. Uh, those those release about a week later. So um, we're gonna we're gonna go down a list here uh, of all the fun, interesting things that. Uh, Yoshi P or uh, AK uh, Final Fantasy XIV Santa has, is bringing us <laughs> for, for the new patch and everything the devs have been hard at work at for these last uh, five months or so. Well, actually, they do make these things way ahead of time, so it's probably longer than that. 
Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go down the list. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, first off, first off, there was a really, really interesting trailer released today. So the last live letter at the end of April was not um, was not one that we got a trailer on. We did get initial information, so we've known about the new dungeon, the new uh, little bit of the new story, and uh, the new uh, trial boss that's coming. Very excited for that. Um, there will be some spoilers, by the way, uh, to this podcast because we are discussing the current patch. So if you're listening right now and you're not caught up to patch 6.3's uh, finale, I w- or even in Endwalker whatsoever, I would highly recommend uh, probably listening to this episode later or skipping ahead, <laughs> if, if that helps. Um, there's going to be quite a bit of spoilers. So uh, from here forward, you have been warned. <laughs> Um, the trial boss is Golbez from Final Fantasy IV, and uh, that's uh, that, that's a character that we started seeing introduced at the end of what was it the six point one patch, I believe. I think so. Um, I don't remember if he was in the uh, extra cutscenes after six point I don't think he was because I don't remember seeing him until after six one. But um, but it was pretty neat. The four fiends, uh, for, well, sorry, the four elemental arch fiends, different than the four fiends. Um, they have uh, been released and we've seen them all they've all been revealed two were trials and two were part of of, uh, dungeons so interesting Um, the two trial ones that we fought so far we've talked about on this podcast before was uh, Rupicante and Babricia the uh, wind and fire uh, arch fiends and uh, we've we're we're still running uh, Mount Ordeals which is weekly Rubicante clears weekly Mount Ordeal Mount Ordeal (laughs) uh, extreme clears on a weekly basis at uh, Monstrous Mondays, but uh, we are going to be putting in Golbez's trial come the launch of 6.4. Uh, it's going to be available right away. It's called the Voidcast Deus or Dias? Yeah, Deus. Uh, Deus? Deus. Deus? Okay, what's a Deus? <laughs> uh, Deus is like a platform which a throne would sit. Awesome, and it's called the Dark Throne. That's the name of the English name of the uh, new patch. So um, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so the 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 void cast deus uh is uh going to be the name of the new extreme trial where we're going to be fighting golbez and uh it looks really interesting have you guys seen any gameplay of the trial because i have and it looks awesome uh i've uh, seen a little bit earlier yeah. this morning when i was looking at uh okay when i was trying to like find the live letter mm-hmm. but uh yeah, it looks it's really hard, it's but it also looks interesting. Um, we haven't, we have, you know, obviously they didn't show like a lot, but from what we see so far, we've got a couple, couple mechanics we can tell. Um, one of my guesses, when uh, the Dark Thrones artwork released uh, about a week, week and a half ago, uh, where we see Gold as a shadow dragon, that's the first time we've seen it. Uh, it's that little long dragon that floats around him. We see it in like Dissidia and uh, in some other artwork of his. Um, that's that's going to be a mechanic. That's going to be part of the fights. And uh, he also has a, lo- a long sword, which is new for Golbez. I don't ever remember him ever because he's usually a sorcerer. I never remember him using a, a giant long sword. So um, he was uh, he was known as as a like the Black Knight before they revealed his name. Although you know F- older FF fans knew who it was the whole time. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I guess I don't know. Do you have to have a sword to be considered a knight? I don't I don't know. I don't think so. Um, do you have to have armor to be considered a knight? Well, he's got the big armor, so <laughs> very big shoulder I, pads. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. JRPGs, man. Yeah. Well, Their yeah. Armor is, uh, the female armor is uh, questionable at best. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. Female is a thing. Yep. So the uh, the fight so far mechanics that we saw with uh, Yoshi P's little Lollafil uh, attacking Golbez just to show some mechanics. <laughs> so we cute. got to see um, you know that Hades mechanic where there's like those floating I guess arrows that are really bright and they shoot two different directions. They'll shoot through yeah. like half the arena and the other side shoot. So he's got that. He's got that in some form. And it looks wow. like he might. I could be wrong on this, but it looks like some of his mechanics might have to do with like fire and ice, or maybe he has the powers of the the arch fiends. That would be interesting, um, which would mean that he has uh, fire, water, wind, and uh, earth under his control, which would make sense. Um, and uh, then he's got a shadow dragon. So Golbez is very powerful. Um, <clears throat> in Final Fantasy IV lore, he is a Lunarian. Uh, descendant of um, 
the um, the Lunarians were these folks that used to live on the moon and when the moon used to used to be a um, habitable place uh, and in, by Final Fantasy IV they're very very rare to find but they're powerful people um, there's been a lot of theories over the years on whether the Lunarians actually existed uh, in the history of Final Fantasy XIV or not, and the fact that we had Alligans that were trapped on the moon uh, five million years ago when Dalamud exploded um, was kind of a uh, nod to maybe they became the Lunarians. I don't know, but then again, the moon uh, there was no there was no clues in Final Fantasy XIV that the that the moon of Aetherius, I should say, the the main source world, uh, there was no there was no clues that that moon was actually habitable all the way like. You know, and we knew know that it was also uh, turned into a um, into a ship <laughs> that the Loperitz reside in to be able to take mortals uh, to another place in space when the Earth w or the planet was going to be destroyed because of the the whole Medion thing mm. that goes down in Endwalker. So, what I'm thinking now, as a as a deep lore scholar of the series, um, what I have been debating with myself is. Did FF4 actually happen in the 13th? Because if we're looking at uh, the Red Moon is present in the uh, in the 13th, uh, the 13th originally known as the Void. All these years, for going on 30 years of of FF history, has now been revealed to be a planet that was succumbed to a dark aspected uh, calamity. And so, what's really interesting is, you know, most people that would find their ways to the Void would never know they were on a planet. It just seemed like a nightmarish, dark hellscape. So now <laughs> now that we have uh, actually seen what's really going on uh, with that reflection world, we see the red moon and we see Golbez. And now there's people saying that they used they were from a kingdom called, once called Baron. So that's basically putting 14 in the third, I mean, sorry, Final Fantasy IV in the 13th, which is a humongous revelation. That's a huge, Which makes me wonder if any of the other yes. 14 Oh yeah, that's, very, that's very good point. Sure. That's a very good point that that's that 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 you thought that because that's been a question so far because um when people saw the first and they saw well Warrior Light appears in the first, but technically the Warrior Light we see is actually Elidibus uh said that he would take the form of uh of the first hero. That doesn't mean that he was uh, originally Warrior Light in the first place. Mm. Um, there's also other stuff in the FF series that establish, establishes uh, who Warrior, the guy known as Warrior of Light, uh, really was, and it has to do with Sid of the Lufane and the, the Sid that's for Final Fantasy One, which isn't in the actual Final Fantasy One game, but he has lore that is from Final Fantasy One, thanks to Dissidia and a bunch of other things. I know this is way off topic for fourteen, but it does it does come around. It <laughs> comes back around right eventually, does, it does I promise. It does come back around. <laughs> so um, looking at uh, all these possibilities and what goes where and the establishment of this like temporary multiverse, because we know that reflections are never really, I don't think they're really mentioned in the later games. And, in, you know, and it, it's up to our listeners, you know, if you, if you truly believe that the games are connected or not, there is a lot of deep lore that supports that. And I talk about that famously all the time. Um, but what's interesting is that 14 is now without, without a doubt establishing it. Um, you know, and we're still going to hear people who go, oh, well, that's just 14. Well, okay, but why are they putting main characters from, <laughs> from other games in there? Um, if you actually look at the, the, the list, there has now been a handful of, like, unquestionable, undeniable direct references, um, including actual characters that have appeared from many of the other games, like many now at this point. Um, hmm. But seeing seeing that uh, you know Golbez, uh, you know that's his home world. His it's it's unclear whether he actually traveled to the void from outside. That's what that was my original. <clears throat> Sorry, that was my original guess, uh, that Golbez found a portal of the void leading him to the 13th, which let, let him to, uh, led him to, you know, creating the arch or meeting the arch fiends and creating them. Um, because if you remember, Rubicante was just an Aura guy that got turned into a monster, basically. And uh, they trusted Golbez because they all, it's actually all very sad. They lost their homes and all they wanted was to either leave that world or save it. So, um almost the same as the Ashians, if you think about it, just different power scales. And, uh, you know, with Golbez being a character, I mean, as far as I know, he's one of the very few, few characters who have become aware of the other reflection worlds. 
it's really super rare that that a a mainline character from the mainline Final Fantasy actually within fourteen becomes aware of those other worlds. Like that that shocked me. I was like, holy crap! You know, that you got to be a really smart <laughs> hero or villain or somebody to to discover that there is another dimension out there and that your world isn't even the source world. So. Um, I wonder what what Golbez would have done if he would have gotten to the source. And we know, you know, slight slight spoiler is that Golbez is not really a villain villain all the way. Um, there is something controlling him. So uh, that hasn't been established in fourteen, but it is established in Final Fantasy IV. Um, so that is a mild spoiler. Telling you what it is would be the whole spoiler. But um, Golbez is a diet spoiler. Yeah, diet spoiler. <laughs> He's he's not a uh, you know he he he's not a super villain where he's like you know he hates everything and wants to reduce it all to nothing and is evil inside of his heart. He was actually kind of being controlled, but he's also desperate too. That's another thing. He's doing a lot of what he's doing out of desperation, especially in fourteen. So, um, if those of you out there listening remember from Final Fantasy IV or know what was controlling Golbez, that might have something to do with Zero and Golbez and uh, the way things go down. Because um, what is known by a lot of folks, even folks that haven't played 4, is that there's a final boss of 4 called Zero Miss. And Zero Miss, knowing who the final boss is in 4, knowing the name, doesn't affect anything. Um, you don't even hear anything related to that name or what it is until the very, very end. And it doesn't have any any real bearing on the rest of Final Fantasy 4. Just with the way it's presented, it's kind of like a surprise at the end, and then you fight the thing. And that thing, Zero Miss, well, it's sharing the name Zero with a character that we've all come to uh, enjoy being a part of the story now named Zero. But there's a sneaking suspicion the entire time. I don't know if you guys have had it, but uh, it seems like Zero's not going to be with us forever. <laughs> I, I yeah, sort of... I've, got, I've got a feeling that we're going to be fighting Zero. Especially, like, if you noticed in the trailer, there was that period where uh, Zero, they had the uh, little evil flamey thing going mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. around them. Yep. Yeah. I still feel like she is us in that reflection. Oh, a like a portion of Asm of Asm's soul. Yeah. Yeah, it's That's possible. Been, it has been a deep down feeling because, like, that may be why she was contracted to be Xenos's avatar. Hmm. Oh, that's There's a good a theory. Thought. That's a very that's good. That's a theory. That's a very good theory. Yeah. A game a theory. theory. <laughs> uh, uh, no, we're not doing this. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I might need to be cut. <laughs> So, um, you know, that, that, that is a good theory. Um, I, I had that feeling really early on too, because, um, we know that Asm's soul was split into multiple pieces and there's different beings. Like we met Ardbert for one, um, who have pieces of Asm's soul within them. So, um, there could very much be other, uh, other heroes on those other reflections, which we've got, what is it? Six reflections left, um, that, uh, are still intact. The other ones were absorbed in the, um, the rejoining that the Ashians used to try to sum or power power Zodiac, who was already summoned, but in uh, in lockdown mode thanks to Hydaelyn. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so interesting is is uh, like you said, um, I think you said Nora. It was the like the the little like black and gray flames, was it or the red? Yeah, flame? It, it was the stuff it was that black. It looked black and kind of purpley to it's me, a, like that same sort of. The aura that the that the ashens have yeah oh like that like that okay yeah okay yeah um i was gonna say like maybe it was the dynamis maybe uh maybe maybe zero turns into zero miss with the dynamis but that would be kind of cheesy mm. because the whole reason why zero miss is a thing is because there is someone at the very very end you get introduced to in four named zemus and they fuse and become zero miss after you kill them so that's what i was thinking might happen here but I don't know what role Zemus would play, and that's kind of mm. a little too tied to four. Like I feel like they're 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 pulling things, but they're not pulling the full plots of those games. So um, 
you know, there's a lot that there's a lot to be discovered uh, in this patch and uh, what's going on with Golbiz. But I think we all get what Golbiz's intentions are in uh, in here. Um, there is also the fact that in uh, in FF lore in general, uh, this was also displayed expertly in uh, 14. That those who cross into the void, um, this is the whole reason why we had to have those little medallion things that protected us. Um, the, eth the, the ether is broken down, so your entire being gets completely broken down and reconstructed because you're in a you're in a reflection in a, un beyond a boundary that your ether was formed from originally. So, the deconstruction of your ether will be re reconstructed, and that's why there are folks that have traveled to the void and actually changed form while doing so. And it made me wonder, like, what if this was like a um, uh, because the void has a, um, a a time travel property, not so much the void itself, but in between reflections. Like if you remember how um, Graha had gone back to, he tried to go back to the past from the future with the Crystal Tower to try to stop uh, what happened with the Black Death, or not the Black Death, but <laughs> the something that was, uh, what was it called? The uh, Black Rose virus or something? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so Black he, Rose. Yeah, he tried to come back to stop it, but he ended up in the first, and then he also ended up 100 years prior to the point that he was trying to travel to. So yep. we've we've seen this with other, other folks in the series, like Gilgamesh is one. Gilgamesh famously uh, fell into the void to sacrifice himself to save the heroes of Final Fantasy V. Then he wound up in other places, and he continues to change forms throughout the whole... Uh, the whole time he's traveling and once you're tinged with the void it's kind of like um i think i mentioned this on another episode there's a theory where like in doctor who if you ever if anybody watches doctor who there's a thing where when they once they time travel once they get kind of like this invisible uh tinge to them where they will always be yep. affected by the time portal or something like that so um, or they're able to do it again and again so there's something very similar with the void and not so much the, just the void but now it's traveling between reflections and even our character uh has that ability once you establish sort of like a i guess some type of quantum entanglement type situation where once you once you there you can go back or something like that um back and forth like we do with ultimate ultimate tool as well with the great distance it's quantum entanglement so um the interesting thing uh is that uh Golba's being in the 13th is that actually the world of four or did he get there with pieces of the world of four because of the ashian sundering we have to also have to remember that the ashian sundering moved physical locations into different parts of the reflections like there were there were places and things that were all part of one big world at one point and things got spread out and split into 13 pieces with the source still having some of it that's why mount golg is in the first but we know that the first isn't where Final Fantasy 1 took place because there's no there's no uh there's no chocobos well people can argue that and say there's no chocobos in Final Fantasy 1 either okay but there are other games that connect to Final Fantasy 1 that do have chocobos <laughs> so there is chocobos in the world of Final Fantasy 1 and that can't possibly be the first so I always like to debunk that because uh people will go well the warrior lights there and I'll go well, yeah but that's just a litibus and he's already aware of all the reflections so the original warrior light could have appeared anywhere else too and then of course the uh, chocobo argument so all this ties into reflections and how they work and why Golbiz is where and all this stuff and i think that uh, originally it was possible that during final fantasy 4 he went to the void and grabbed some arch fiends and then came back with them <laughs> and fought the heroes in 4 and then maybe at some point because we killed them in uh where we kill them at in the story um that maybe they're not all the way gone because there are very powerful souls within the ether that can that can be uh, brought back or resummoned and that's already been established as well aka primals or other types of something so is golbez actually golbez as we know him from four i think uh i think we have yet to see that but let's move on from talking about golbez <laughs> <laughs> we've been talking about golbez for a minute here so he's obviously the new trial it's going to be very very interesting um, we have the somehow further Hildebrand Adventures coming in 6.45. There was uh, I'm talk. Excited. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, me, me too. Because yes. uh, have you guys done the the most current Hildebrand quest? Yes. Oh yes. It's hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is so funny. I play Hildebrand every time that I can. <laughs> so I ridiculous. Mean, I mean, enough said. Can we get? Maybe a sign of Blitzball coming, if, since they did use Zex animation there. 
Oh yeah, it does Ooh. look like the jack shot, huh? Um, the the thing that really got me was that there's that um, that doctor guy that ended up becoming like a robot, and that 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 just that whole thing just cracks me up. It's so hilarious. Like, he's still alive, and his head is still like now now some <laughs> random thieves like took his head, so he's who knows where he is. <laughs> Oh my but, god. Uh, but he's oh, yeah. he's from four. He is from four. And uh then now he's you know, I guess somehow he became a Garlean scientist and now his you know, his head is just constantly traveling around. So I think they're gonna <laughs> I think they're gonna use that as a comedy bit for a while. He, um, he's just gonna he's just trying to get ahead in life. Oh my god. Oh. He's trying to get ahead. <laughs> Glitchy. Why? Glitchy no. So, some people were like thinking, Sorry. "Oh, there's not going to be a relic update this patch." I don't know why that went viral for a bit. Did you guys see that? People were like saying, "No, that yeah. sounds." I saw dumb, the thing. To be honest, it it is dumb because there's always a relic update. Once it starts, yeah. it's every it's every patch, even though it's usually the four or five. It's still uh, every patch. So we've got that coming up along with, like I said earlier, a uh, another Splendor's Tools uh, step coming up. Um, so weapon and tool enhancement requests are officially in 6.45 where you can upgrade the Mandrival weapons and Splinter's tools. The patches Unreal Trial against Zervan, Containment Bay, Z1, T9. Um, I remember the last live letter, he said, uh, Yoshi, he said that, um, the first appearance of Zervan in Heavensward, uh, as a EX trial was not as hard as Sophia and Sephiroth were. So, um... It's being that he was like the finale, like you know, like the final EX trial of that expansion, I think. Um, they want and, and that he wasn't super hard, uh, they wanted to make this one hard. So, <laughs> apparently, Zervan Unreal is supposed to be pretty challenging. And uh, I know that we have some experts in the FC that are going to be working on uh, seeing just how hard that would be to implement mm -hmm. into Monmon Mon because we have some members that have been asking about putting unreals back into Monmon, Mon. and uh, they were in there for a while um i think we took it out when see sephiroth sephiroth unreal was pretty easy uh sophia was i think the hard nah, one, right? sephiroth was not easy no no, no one of them was, was easy hard. okay that was the hard one then what was before what was before unreal sephiroth an um, ultima ultima and that was easy yeah okay there was an easy one, and there was a hard one. Then there was one that was so-so, and I think that was Sophia. So I think that's, um, I think that's like it's been a while, and and they want to they want to take a look at, um, you know, uh, how easy it would be, and it's it's not it doesn't have to be easy. It's just that you know how how uh, viable it would be as a you know as an FC event, something that we could at least see yeah. clear on once in a while, and also yeah. you know get members to learn over time because people are interested in doing unreals, and there is some decent rewards. <laughs> <clears throat> um let's see so we've seen the ether font we talked about that uh oh sorry ether front <laughs> looked like font but it's front i think it is ether font is it font i think it is font this website says front <laughs> i think darn it. it's supposed to be ether font it is font i was right the first time i was right yeah. the darn it website and they then their typos okay um so yeah that's going to be the main scenario uh main scenario quest uh, we already talked about Voidcast Dias, and the third and final chapter of Pandemonium Raid series uh, is going to conclude that story with the Anabisios tier. Um, Savage level difficulty mode is coming out May 30th, one week after panel patch launch. So that is a, that does officially officially put uh, 6.4 on May 23rd. So uh, let's see here. That is officially... I was looking for something to drop on Laura's birthday. Ten and a half days from now, and then of course expect a good, a good, a uh, little bit of maintenance prior. Um, the new Pandemonium raid. <laughs> Did you guys see uh, see that in the trailer there? We got the that white monster looking guy that was uh, yep. shown on the uh, website's um, previews, previous screenshots. What is that thing? We don't know what it is, but because Athena is like talking to it in the trial from what we saw from Yoshi's footage um, or it seems like Athena um, it's one of her creations and it I noticed that it also crawls on all fours did you see that <laughs> it's kinda, I didn't notice it's kind of creepy <laughs> it's kind of creepy it's, it stands like a like a person but then it starts crawling around all forms and it's bitey it's very bitey so it's definitely I would call a it the baby 
<laughs> the baby. The area the you fight it in does look like the ether. Um, like I said, um, uh, I think we were talking before the podcast when I said that uh, that arena does look like it's in the ether based on the end of the um, Abyssos tier. You get to see the entire Castle of Pandemonium shows up in the ether uh, where the Charlians have their... Um, their uh, asioscope or asios yeah where they can see into the ether so why why is it in there um we don't know i mean i know some of you got to see the uh the monster that came out of the castle <laughs> yeah <laughs> like what the crap is that <laughs> what the was that it's a it's a reaper <laughs> it's a reaper from mass effect <laughs> it reminds me of the, the final boss of mass effect 2 it's like a weird like head thing on a me mechanical body with the castle attached or something. It's really, really freaking weird looking. Um, my guess is that's P11's boss because they usually keep the, the 12th one hidden. Uh, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, Watch that be P9's boss? P9 is supposed to be the white thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's either P10 ah. or P11. It's got to be one or the other. Um, as far as the story concluding, what are you guys looking forward to for that? Hmm. I want to find out who Athena is. Well, we know so far that, uh, that's, um, what was it? Erythonius' mother, as well as La Brea's, like, wife, I guess. Yeah. And something happened to her, and, uh, now they are going to probably establish, you know everything that happened and why and then what's going I'm 99 percent sure we're about to find out why laha bread was always so serious when we knew him well he was part of the convocation he was in charge of a massive uh massive operation of creating like creatures that were extremely dangerous and then you know keeping them locked away in pandemonium and um you know if you know from <laughs> from uh, greek mythology or even from maybe some other uh, historical texts that uh, Pandemonium is actually the name for the first layer of hell. It was yep. featured in Final Fantasy II uh, because Emperor Mateus actually was not happy with conquesting the planet. He wanted heaven and hell as well. <laughs> and so he, uh, in the novel, only in the 1988 novel of Final Fantasy II, he actually imprisoned Satan as a weakling and took his power and and basically took over hell and then he was like i'm bored so he went to go take over heaven and you get to experience that in the uh soul of rebirth chapter um so <laughs> the funny part is there's no mateus and there's no there's no devil there's it's just castle pandemonium and somehow the ashians are using it to uh store bad things <laughs> and uh i'm sure there's m like more stuff in that realm like somewhere but um you know we know that that elpis was a very 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 long time ago so um that whole entire realm could literally just be like blank you know what i mean it could just be this like realm they created in order to just store things in <laughs> it's pretty crazy nonetheless um it looks like the castle gets destroyed in the trailer did you see that sure it does yeah. what if the... i'm still trying to figure out if those eyeballs are the that one ship from uh, nine. Oh, the big eye from the background in P eight. Yeah. It does look like the thing from nine. Yeah, I forgot the name. Um, the gigantic ship with the eye on the bottom. It does. Oh. Yeah. No, pretty top of my head. It does look like it. Uh, it. Is it? I don't know because there was that um, that one lizard thing that had an eye that looked like that too. So yeah, it could just be it's representing the fact that there are weird large creatures in there or it could have something to do with the thing that bursts out of the castle in the trailer uh, Bismarck we'll is out. that you? <laughs> suddenly, a Bismarck. Worm, <laughs> so, suddenly a worm god appears from a third, Destiny? A third Bismarck Oh my god <laughs> We were looking for that uh, that missing one earlier weren't we? <laughs> There's three missing aren't there or four? Nyarthalep is that you? I have a Bismarck from every reflection Bismarck from every reflection. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, definitely looking forward to that. Um, and, of course, our members can enjoy the return of Azure Pandemonium Tuesdays, uh, doing weekly clears of the raids and getting those weekly drops. The um, raid gear was shown. <clears throat> um, I, didn't, I didn't see which gear was what, though, but I did see that uh, there was a lot of gear shown during this light letter. 
Um, Yoshi had a lot of piece of paper with printouts of stuff that he previewed, um, which honestly I don't understand why they don't just use slides for those too. When <laughs> instead of just having a piece of paper, he holds up to the screen. But uh, we did get to see it clear enough, and um, there was quite a bit of screen, uh, screenshots that people have been saving of those as well. And uh, it's very beautiful weapons, very beautiful pieces of new gear. Some of the gears from uh, the Mount Rokon Criterion and Variant Dungeon. There's also gear from uh, the, what is it, the Voidcast Deus, I'm sure, as well as uh, Pandemonium Raids, and am I forgetting anything? Maybe even PvP? There's some PvP stuff. Yeah, there was the staff that Yoshi's character had, which was like glowing and red and really neat looking. That's supposed to be from PvP too, I think. Um, I think. Uh, oh, and of course the, the tomes, <laughs> the tomestone of comedy gear. Um, yes. Um, so there's I, that too. There's a lot oh, of yeah. I need the What would you say? I need what made weapon from that? Yeah, uh, that one's really nice looking too. Sleeping bunny on it. It's so cute. Yeah, I wonder, uh, wonder where that will come from. I bet, you, I bet you that's the tome gear. Start mm -hmm. curiosity. The uh, the new gear sets designed by the dev team and the new weapon designs. Do we know what sets those are going to be from? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Um, we have because I want that pally set. Some of them. I think those are, are supposed from... to be tomes. Yes. Well, no, because if you scroll down further, it sh they show some of the tombstone comedy gear, and doesn't look like that. Huh. Hmm. Let me see here. Craft. Oh, okay. So there's crafted gear. There's new furnishings from the design contest. There's new glamours. Oh wait, no, you're right. That is the tombstone of comedy uh, gear. Century. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so th there's the Tombstone gear, the Panamonium and Abyssios raid gear is its own section. That's where the, um, it's that bard, that bard, uh, costume that, uh, Feylana shared in Discord. <laughs> there's, oh, uh, yes. That oh, one's actually, that's, that's all from Pandemonium, but the other stuff bard. is, uh, is the Tome gear. And their bards. The new Tome gear. Uh, so let me scroll back up to our list here. I went way down because I was really curious about the gear. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, who here has done a Criterion or a Variant Dungeon? I have. You have? And I have not yet. What'd you think? It was fun, but yeah. the rewards could be better. Better. Is there more in the yeah. Criterion or the Savage? I have not done the Savage yet, although I do it. know that that's where Leg's shiny new chair comes from. <laughs> okay. We, we all know. <clears throat> we, we all we all know the Leg is going to just, like, lose his shit. <laughs> La oh, Lagness, yeah. I thought you said Legs. I'm like, is that somebody's nickname? <laughs> leg? I, I don't know. That's right, yeah. We could call him Tiny Legs. <laughs> Okay. That might be a bit mean. Lag though, is amazing. He has his own new little high chair in the assembly chamber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's <laughs> the, the Even though we have more than one Lala on the council. But anyway, um, so yeah, I don't have a lot of expertise on variant criteria, and I still need to do the variant for Silda and uh, soak up that lore. I know that the variants are, mm -hmm. are very fun for learning stuff if you're interested in uh, lore for things. I think that might be their way of kind of creating little fun things now and then that you can solo if you wanted to or you can you can bring in friends to it too um but if you wanted what? just a little solo experience where you can uh, learn some lore they might they might keep doing that i remember mm. um when uh, we talked last time they had mentioned that um mount rokan uh which is in higashi i think it's in i don't think it's in doma i think it's in higashi um yeah it's like the western island of higashi yeah yeah, because there's, um, there's that big strip, right? And then the, the Kugani is not even the capital. It's just a port city. The capital is Bugyo. Bugyo is the main capital city of uh, Hingashi, and it's actually supposed to be a very big city. Um, Speaking of places, oh, I wonder but, if we're going to go. I, that's what I was going to say, is I think maybe eventually we're going to see Bugyo. I also really hope we get to see Velnane, which is over in Authored, and it's actually on I'm, the map, too. Those things are both on the map. I'm super excited now. Now I have to do... Uh, I have to gather more tomes from... Uh, not tomes... Uh, more just conch shell things from uh, from uh, Ireland Sanctuary because I just saw that we are getting the Dungeon Queen. 
Yeah. Oh, we yeah, are. Mount. Yeah. There's a whole the bunch queen. of mounts that they showed. Uh, there's like a yokai thing with it's like a big lantern with a tongue hanging out. Is that a yokai that thing? Or it took like else? maybe five seconds for the chat to like start talking about lewd stuff after they showed that one. Mm-hmm. Of course they did. Did you expect anything else? Is that an axolotl uh, mount? There is a ninja yes. dog minion. And Ooh, new bed mount. Some other stuff. Yeah, there's a new flying bed for some reason. Or is it a bed? Is it a flying bed or is it a is that a piece of furniture? No, it's flying. Uh, the, oh the hell way, yeah! The way Yoshi showed it on the on the stream was he he laid in it and just was really still, and he moved the camera around, and then all of a sudden he just took off, and started flying, and him and Fox <laughs> were laughing. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Oh my god. There's also another, um, like one of those Loperit robots. Like they've there's another one of those. Um, oh. One that it runs on the like ground a and it transforms. Type? I think. Yeah, it looks like it's a different type because that other one was the floaty one with the two little like pinchy arm things and then the, mm-hmm. this, yeah. the the little dance it does and then there's a new one there's a new one now um so yeah lots of mounts of minions um we have let's see duty support is being added to a number of stormblood dungeons so if you want to go back and experience those with npcs maybe there's some interactions with the npcs that might be interesting i have noticed that it the with the trust system there is some interactions that add a little bit of lore sometimes um, when you do trust parties. So um, it may just make me wonder if, like, you know, what it would be like doing the Stormblood dungeons with the NPCs. Mm. Um, lots of PvP stuff. <laughs> a lot of PvP and stuff. Uh, PvP. Uh, PvP. What and PvP, did they uh, do PvP to function. shatter? Yeah, the Yoshi was like, well, we made some some landscape adjustments, and then they show this picture of the shatter map being totally different looking i, I don't understand what i'm looking at <laughs> it's a triangle it's well, i know it's, it's a triangle. triangle you know what's weird is like if you went there before you could look around there was like houses and random things there was like scenery you could kind of sightsee a little bit yeah there. i feel like they just were like yeah oh, that's not important so they took it out and just made a weird triangle <laughs> but the lore i don't know how much lore does that really add though just that there was a stable or a building but wasn't it like uh it's probably in the background wasn't it like Car- I just probably can't access it now wasn't it all wasn't it carton of flats basically that was uh borderlands ruin borderlands oh is that you're yeah. you're right yeah you're this, right. this uh this is like out i think it's the snow one right out in uh somewhere in kurthus or something yeah this is the yeah. snow one mm-hmm um let's see here uh, adjustments to frontline so doing frontlines can add to your series exp now for pvp um and then they've got that new uh scoreboard that's going to be on the top and one question that uh Kozlun in our community uh he had one of our alliance leaders um he was he was saying that um he thinks maybe the or he was wondering if the scoreboard would actually change positions depending on what grand company you were in or fighting for because if you notice like the screenshot shows maelstrom in the front so it makes me wonder if that'll uh, if that'll change um then we've got uh, let's see here uh, like i said blue mage content coming in six four five uh level cap increase from 70 to 80. um so it's a whole bunch of new gear enemies and spells and the mass carnival and new duties uh for the blue mage log then the ocean fishing route the route towards kugane is opened up and that looks kind of neat um i noticed that um in the the yojimbo fight how many did you guys fight yojimbo in uh, uh, Hildebrand? Yeah. So did you remember, like, in the background, you get to see kind of, like, those lanterns over the ocean and Kugane is, like, way in the background because you're, like, yeah. way out there? Yeah. <clears throat> it's kind of um, in the uh, ocean fishing uh, video or screenshot they showed. You could you could also see Kugane in the back. So I, I don't know about you guys, but I want to see more of Hingashi. I want to see more of the main. That would actually be nice the, uh, to see, yeah. The K- Koshu is technically the, the region and the, and the Hingashi mainland. And with, uh, like we were saying a minute ago, um, Bugyo being the capital city there, um, apparently in the lore, Bugyo is isolated right now. There was a reason why they closed their doors so nobody could venture there. But I bet you that's just like a excuse for them to save it for later. <laughs> it seems that way to me, but... Um, you guys ocean fish at all? E, a little bit. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no is obsessed with it. <laughs> I, I tried it when it first came out. I think it was like mid Shadowbringers or something. And um, but I I never kept doing it. And I still want to get the rewards, like the little shark minion. I don't think it's that hard to get though. 
Um, so yeah, new tomes, uh, tomes, tomes of comedy. There are fairy glamours available for scholars, so they can now select between Eos, Selene, and Carbuncle. Um, and will they let us glamours as fail all though? Oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> have fail all as your glamour. Yeah. Probably because you'd have to get to, uh, you'd have to be past Shadowbringers for that to make sense. Well, yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, and how awesome is this? Uh, maximum number of gear sets. Uh, increasing to 100 for all characters immediately, regardless of quest pro progression. Oh, that'll be good, yeah. Yeah, 100, mm. 100 gear set slots. Give me more glamour <laughs> slots, please. Well, for me, like somebody yeah, I just who... just gave you more glamour slots. Like, I don't use glamour plates. Oops. I just like saving gear sets with glamour. So, for me, that's, like, really, really good. And if you want different uh, gear sets for different jobs you play, and you want to you say, you're like, oh, I want to wear crafted gear for this type of content, um, or you want to, you know, spec slightly differently for something else, and that also makes sense. You might have two different paladins or two different uh, ninjas, you, you know, whatever your, your builds are. And not that it matters a ton in this game, but... Um, job icons now displayed in the chat log and on player nameplates. Chat log icons only display within parties and alliances. And then the, um, they're changing the transaction fees for items sold on the market board being incorporated into the total price, uh, under total. Uh, so that's <laughs> a nice little quality of life thing there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, uh, I think we knew this from last time that glasses and wing fashion accessories can be actually displayed and engaged in battle in the overworld, not in duties, but at least in the overworld. And that's, uh, what is it, uh, glass? When they say glasses, do they mean, like, not like the glamoured, like, head glasses, right? Do those not show in duties? Uh, uh I've never actually experimented with that. I wonder why it says glasses. Well, items stored in a variety of locations can now be selected when casting glamours in in-room, so that's fun. And then there's the job adjustments. Do you guys see those? I have not, I'm not seen yet. those so, just yet. Some people are saying that the 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 dragoon meme is going is dead. Yeah. Because, oh yeah. yeah because, the dragoon meme yeah. is gone. Yes. <laughs> jump and high jump are no longer uh, affecting character positions, and uh, their server will not recognize them, um, or will no longer be affected by it. I mean, uh, in accordance with the change, both actions are now performed while bound. So. Um, I saw one comment that was saying that, like, you know, maybe the the, the meme can still live with other types of jumps, but <laughs> oh yeah, jump high red mage jump. jump still exists. There is that too, yeah. And I, then, I don't know. Uh, there's still the elusive jump. Yeah, there are other there are other jumps. So um, then we've got <laughs> uh, party buffs are being extended in radius to thirty yams, which uh, mainly to buff abilities that continue to increase damage dealt or reduce damage taken. Uh, improvements have been made to the usability of certain job actions, so Paladin's Atonement is no longer going to interrupt combos when that is used. And then, of course, we've got the new PvP series beginning uh, patch for 6.4 mm -hmm. as well. So that's Season 7 of Crystalline Conflict. Brand new PvP season. Um, did you guys ever grind out the current one? Uh, I did I not. No, you, you saw that I had the watermelon. Oh so. yeah, you and your watermelon, yeah, <laughs> watermelon, uh, ADS mount thing, uh, elegant orb thing. I don't particularly cared for the the gear set, so I, I kind of don't want to do crystalline conflict, but I may do it last minute. Yeah, like uh, there was that link shell emote, like that was cool. And, yeah, the link uh, shell emote is. I have the link shell emote, emote is good. Some people find the the armor they're really cool. What is it? The uh, like, oh yeah, like fallen yeah, monarchy yeah, yeah. attire, whatever it was called. Uh, that's really nice set. That's a really nice set. Um, I I kind of came to terms with the fact that like I'm not going to use it for anything, even though it's really nice. I I like my glams where they're at. Um, but uh, if you're listening to this and you still have time, you still have time to grind it out. It is a very nice piece of gear you can get from the uh, current the current PvP season. Uh, rewards and all you gotta do is just grind out crystalline conflict like crazy <laughs> um, but uh, beginning in season 7 players that place within top 100 rankings or diamond tier and above are actually going to be given additional rewards and this includes an item that will uh, apply an effect to hella weapons so 
That's interesting. I haven't really s have we seen them do anything like that before? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, and then, of course, Frontline's uh, new UI that I mentioned a minute ago with the um, that scoreboard. There's a little uh, limit gauge and the uh, damage dealt, damage taken, and the fill rate uh, taken per job job class uh, per job basis. <laughs> um, also, a little bit of update on that, too. So these are like little things. Um, but like uh, we said earlier, there is a lot of nice looking gear. Um, the, <coughs> the, let's see, hold on, let me go down. Let me look at the, yeah, it's a lot. Mm. It's a lot of gear. It's a lot of gear this patch. Does it feel like there's more than normal? <laughs> like a little bit, a little bit more than normal as far as gear goes? I don't know. Um, but it's probably because there's, um, there's some extra glamours, crafted gear, Mount Rokon, a, a, you know, trial and raids all lining up at one time. Plus, Island Sanctuary is getting a uh, getting a handful of stuff too. I am not. I am excited. I am not caught up mm -hmm. on my island though, but uh, it's quite a bit of furnishing. They they showed the, um, you know, how the housing system basically works, how the furnishing system will work in Island Sanctuary. So it looks. Uh, Looks like we can add up to 140 items in our little home base area. Ah. That's, that's pretty nice. Um, there will be new ranks, uh, new visions, gathering areas in the wild, construction plots in the hideaway, item rewards, materials, craftable items, crops, animals, iron, owl works, handicrafts, and structures coming out. Uh, and I, I, I'm expecting that every couple patches we're going to continue to see Island Sanctuary additions like these. Um, so outdoor furnishings only right now with a maximum yeah. of 90 slots being unlocked. Why did I see 140 there? Oh, that's 140 in the in the inventory. Never mind. It is 90 slots. My bad. 90 slots uh, unlocked for the Island Sanctuary. Um, and then special furnishings like striking dummies and gardens will not be supported. Um, I think we mentioned that last time as well just because those are tied to um, the server and when you're in a duty or some kind of instance, you're not really like in the server in the server. Um... You have to place the furnishings in your inventory as glamours. So that's interesting. They will bound to you, but not consumed. Hmm. Uh, this means multiple glamours can be placed on a single item. Oh, kind of like when you're uh, glamouring your uh, squadron. Have you done that? I mean, you guys no, I have not done that much. So, I didn't know that was an option. Yeah, you can glamour your squadron. Um, like my whole squadron for the, in my Maelstrom uh, GC squadron, they're all wearing Azure tabards and like Azure member uniforms, so they look like a squad of Azure people going out with me. Nice. On missions. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I would make yeah. them wear... And that little snowman that uh... you can unlock, like you can actually see his face if you take it off. <laughs> I haven't found the snowman one. You have a what? Glitch. What did you say, Glitch? I haven't found the snowman one. Oh, yeah. He tends to pop up, like, if you just keep running it. Um, keep, keep, you know, keep recruiting. Um, but, uh, let's see, island, island prisms may be used to register your furnishings, allowing you to place them when they're not even held in your inventory. If you register them, they will bind to you. A uh, number of island prisms yielded from crafting will in be increased in the future. You can also dye your furnishings. So the reason why I said it was kind of like a squadron is what it sounds like. It might not be like that, but it sounds like that to me. And I did I did watch that portion of... I watched the whole live letter, but by that point, it was towards the end, and I was getting pretty sleepy. <laughs> but it does look like where uh, when you glamour your squadron, basically all you got to do is have a glamour prism in your inventory, and then just show like the the system like which one you want it to look like and it just goes so i have a feeling that uh with island sanctuary it, like they said the furnishings are like glamours all you really got to do is just use um you use I island prisms i guess and then you glam like something that will look like the furnishing i guess that's weird but interesting <laughs> so um hmm. yeah um, Interesting. Hmm. We did learn a lot more about Mount Rokon this time, so it's it's not just uh, you know a another Kugana Castle type area. There's actually some mountainy spots that look really neat. It kind of feels like you're going on a on a little bit of a mountain trek, you know, like a little bit of hiking tour. Um, hmm. There's a really nice vista. I don't know if you guys saw any screenshots of that, but not not the vista that you use for your 
your your um what is it sightseeing log i just mean like vista in general like you climb to the top and there's just you just see this massive forest just going really far uh you know over the uh koshu mainland of hingashi um so mount rokan level 90 casual play um, like i said earlier you can do it solo you can go with the party um, there are no role restrictions and job changes are permitted uh, enemy strength is always determined by the party size, and your route depends on your actions. You can explore Mount Rokan uh, alongside a certain someone, which looks to be revealed as Hancock. If you remember Hancock from the Storm oh, story, oh, <laughs> yeah. So you're going on, you're going on a hike, oh, no. on a hike with Hancock. Uh, <laughs> it's basically. I want to go on a hike with Hancock. <laughs> um, apparently, you experience a slightly different story, though, depending on the path that you choose. And I noticed that there is a spot. Um, where there's you reach this place in the woods where there's like these wooden gates um, that all have portals in them and depending on which portal you choose it goes to a different place on Mount Rokan and that's the story that you get so I think there was four that I saw which means four different outcomes if that's the case could it could have been five I can't remember uh, but based on your role you get variant actions and so you're gonna have like variant cure and variant this and variant nice. that uh, those very actions used to compensate for rules that you might be missing or playing without, which means you can heal yourself uh, as a DPS or whatever. Um, you get two at a time, and they have recast timers. So kind of like Logos actions. <laughs> or uh, what was the other one uh, besides uh, besides Logos actions? The Bajja one, the Bajja actions that you got. Um, those two. It looks very similar. I see the exact same looking action menu. Um, and then of course these, there's the another Mount Rokan, um, which yes. restricts normal methods of resurrection, but each player can use a limited amount of variant rays too. Um, so other variant actions aren't available there, but defeated enemies do not revive after a party wipe. <clears throat> um, and then of I course there's the Savage Ronkin version. Instead of Rokan. <laughs> What's that? I said I heard Ronkin instead of Rokan. Oh, oh, Ronkin. Yeah, that's easy to say Three. because of Ronka. Yeah, Three. yeah Mount Ronka. But uh, Rok it's actually Rokon. Rokon. This is uh, Japanese phonetics there. Rokon. One of the rare moments you see a double K in a Japanese type word, which do it does exist. Um, let's see. And then, so Criterion. Some people get confused between the, di the difference between variant and Criterion. Variant is something that you would consider casual. Criterion is a little harder, but then there's the savage mode. So there's actually three difficulties to this thing with multiple outcomes. So this is a lot of work being put into one special dungeon. So it's probably worth checking out at least the variant version of it. And as we saw in the live letter, there is two new, you know, nice looking Japanese style glamours that we can get uh, from there as well. And let's go down the list here. Looks like we have some fan festival information. There was a little shout out about 16 and uh, the immersive game. I'm pack. still sad they're <laughs> not streaming the concerts. I wanted to go to that orchestra. A lot one. Of, I think a lot of people are sad about that. Um, they used to. They did used to. Um, the I think it was the second or third, or maybe it was the second and third fan fest they did. But then what happened was uh, they didn't. And then right after they stopped doing that, there was the pandemic where they had the big, you know, the really big free digital one that we all watched. And yeah. that one, of course, had it, um, which made some people think that they were going back to doing it again. And now they're back to their old ways of keeping the concert uh, to only the folks that are there. And they don't want to, uh, they don't want to put it on stream, which especially given how hard it really was to not get that tickets. hard. I don't know why they, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just one of those things. I don't know why Square does the things they do when it comes to live events like that. And it's like, what is it? Um, I think it's a. They don't understand it... the bot scourge. How many tickets do they sell? Do we know? I, I want to say I heard it was like fifteen thousand maximum. Wow. Okay. So that's still bigger than old fan fests. Old fan fests were like, I, th I think, I think, um, I could be wrong on that. Um, but it does sound slightly bigger than what I remember, but I, it's been some years and we had a pandemic. Yeah. In the of that, so still. trying to remember, but I know that the venues they chose were not that big. They were smaller than the amount of tickets they sold. And that, that was something I always thought was silly, but um one yeah, interesting but this time thing they're in caesar's forum so it's like yeah. i've gone to conventions there that place is massive right 
They they could have fit thirty, forty thousand people in there if they had wanted to, but yeah, here we are. Yeah, here we are. But one interesting thing like I thought uh, stadium with people. that they showed was a screenshot of a battle challenge. So you know how sometimes uh, at E3 or other events and also at FanFest, they'll have what they call the battle challenge where you can win a shirt from a yep. upcoming EX trial fight. And it looks like we are looking at Osura. Unless I'm wrong, that is very much Osura from Final Fantasy IV, which is fitting for the uh, Endwalker's final patch or maybe 7.0, but I kind of doubt that just because it looks like it's, it is Thavnir in the background, um, which doesn't mean they can't use Thavnir for a 7.0 thing, but I don't think they're going to focus on Thavnir for 7.0. Um, but it does look like the Osura fight. So we do get to fight Osura, um, who in 4 uh, was, I'm trying to remember now, queen of the realm that Rydia went to that I forgot the name of. I felt terrible. Uh, what was the name of... I'm having a brain fart. I know this. <laughs> but there's a, there's, a, there's a time skip only for Rydia because she goes to another realm uh, where she meets the icons and they're... I think it's the realm of the icons. Is that, is that what it was called? If you're listening, uh, comment please or DM me to let me know what I'm forgetting. You could probably Google it, but... We're in the middle of podcast. <laughs> uh, Don't look at me. <laughs> but she was uh, she was the queen, and I think Bahamut was the king in that realm. I, and, or was it Odin? Well, it wasn't Odin. Odin was under the castle. I'm having a brain fart. It has been a minute. Um, but uh, Asura, Queen Asura, is in it. And you get her as a nice summon, too, in, uh, the, in Final Fantasy IV, which she does random things every time she comes out. She can either heal your party or do damage. All that fun stuff. Usually buffs. Um, but this, this, she is a boss fight. And it does look very intimidating. <laughs> With all those swords. That's, uh, that's a good handful of swords there. That's six, six swords. Six arms, six swords. So, um, that's a lot the of overall stuff. style is very fitting for Thavnir. That's a lot of damage. Yeah. I know we do doing. have some folks in the FC that did make it, uh, for FanFest. So, um, the North American Fan Festival live stream is going to be on YouTube and Twitch for everybody else. Um, more details are going to eventually come for that. Uh, sometimes they do charge for that, and sometimes they don't. So we're still waiting to hear about that. Um, hey, uh, guys? Yeah, what's up? Sorry, I realize I'm backtracking the conversation a little bit, but I was just going through, good. again, the stuff for the uh, from the PLL. Uh-huh. Did you guys actually look at like the full stage preview of the Voidcast Dias? Yeah, it's no. uh, it's a big chunky block uh, hovering in the sky over the moon. Yeah. yeah. What about it? You there? Misty? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, You're good. I just noticed it looks like a giant die. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, and that makes you know that's a good that's a good observation because uh, it could maybe there's a mechanic where it moves. I, I mean that also it don't the name is almost a pun. Oh my god! Oh, don't you dice. even? Don't you even? <laughs> dice. 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 No, no. <laughs> this is it has been a diet theory. This is this is a thing now, isn't it? <laughs> Well, if you are if you are going to FanFest and you're listening to this, uh, FanFest attendees in all regions, so that covers uh, in uh, Japan or in Europe, uh, will also get the chance to try the new trial early. The new trial is called Special Battle, the Gilded Araya or Aria. I think it's Araya, and uh, that's the that's the Osra fight I was mentioning. If that ends up not being Osra, well, then it's not, but it very much looks like it. Um, then, of course, uh, in May 22nd at 11 p.m. Pacific, um, there will be a uh, Japanese audio-only uh, reading live stream of the patch notes. So, um, you know, for those that uh, understand Japanese or uh, like to translate, they're going to be reading over all of those, which also tells us that the patch notes are going to be out by then. Uh, and I sure hope so. So that's one day before the uh, date that's <laughs> patch is supposed to launch on. Uh, the 2.0 update of the Immersive Game Pack uh, for the 14 edition will use an AI algorithm to create smoother transitions for audio when changing directions. So the AI will somehow know that you have moved your head in the game and will give you a whole different hearing experience. <laughs> 
Interesting. Interesting. I've never heard of that yet in uh, games. Um, that's it's something. A, that it's a big we'll, meme. Everything has to use AI we'll in these days. See that in the future, maybe. I don't know. I know that a, lot, a while back, uh, when they were talking about designs for the PS5, they were thinking that maybe it would use some kind of like biofeedback, where the controller like senses that your palms are sweaty and the character in game looks at you and asks if you're nervous, stuff like that. Like maybe PS6. I don't know. Yeah, are heavy. <laughs> PS6. Hey, PS6 through 10 is already trademarked. Did you know that? I know it is. They already, they already registered it, so they're they're, they're yeah. game to like keep going with the same like you know the same uh, same same naming conventions. But um, maybe <laughs> PS6 for uh, 2028, 2027, something like that. I saw some. I just hope we get like... some PS5 games before we get the PS6. <laughs> That's a good point. That's yeah, a... uh... I mean. Well, some Five of them, odds? <laughs> there's exclusives, but then they become like on PC later. Like you know, uh, FF16 and Kingdom Hearts 4 can't remain on PS5, so that's going to end up being on on other stuff. Because um, those are the first two that I think of. But um, you know, it's you know what really got me was um, the other day. I don't know who it was. I don't remember where it was on the internet or if it was on a community or whatnot. But I saw someone say, "Well, I know it's old now, but I finally got a PS5," and I was like. Like that, that's painful. <laughs> finally got what now? They're, they said, uh, I know it's old now, but I finally got a PS5. <laughs> so I was like, God, are you kidding me? Like, I mean, it's still not that easy to obtain. They're, they're still limited in some regions. And it just sucks that, uh, that this, this generation of gaming, like we've got PlayStation might be in the floor with Xbox, which is no question at all. I think they... And this yet their console is still for... difficult to <laughs> difficult to obtain. What was that? I think this is a lesson for people who are creating the systems of uh, you underestimate us all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it just sucked with like the pandemic, you know, releasing a big console like that in the midst of that. And then of course they couldn't wait because they didn't know when it was going to, you know, let up. Mm -hmm. And then the whole, um, you know, just everything going on with with uh this the um what was it the uh shortage for servers and uh different different parts that were needed and you know there was stuff going on with with importing costs and all that it just got really hard for uh for ps5 um but um but yeah um that's just about there's a few other miscellaneous things um, mm -hmm. The FF16 producer expects the FF14 producer to share collaboration details after people have played 16. So, so he should be he's talking to himself <laughs> in the mirror. <laughs> that's literally he's the producer of both, so that's him talking to himself uh, about that, and um, that also means that we can expect a collab, uh, a 16 slash 14 collab coming after the release of 16. 16, I think, that'd be uh, so awesome. That's releasing in June. So probably July, maybe we'll see a collab. And if it's anything like the 15 one, there will be a uh, a collab of 14 content in 16 as well, which I'm actually a little more curious about, to be honest. Um, but that's just me. Um, then, of course, remember, this is the 10th anniversary of Realm Reborn this year. So there are other collaborations that are announced um, that will occur. <clears throat> And uh, the next live letter is expected to be at FanFest in July. So mm. um, that's two months until we get that. And if we're going to get that in two months, then they're probably going to be talking about 645, which puts 645 probably at about the two-month mark uh, after the 6.4 launch in a week and a half. So probably expect 6.45 when we get there and 6.45 is probably going to be the halfway maybe to one third to halfway mark to 6.5 so if we had to do our math <laughs> we're looking at uh june july august september maybe october knowing them they'll probably push it a little out more october for 6.5 and if that's the case then we're looking at 7.0 somewhere by march hopefully of 2024 so that's kind of how we try to predict things but we'll see what actually happens sometimes uh we get to an expansion launch and they they like to put on a couple extra months there and 
personally, I don't mind because that helps it be good. And there's not like there's a lack of things to do. So, <laughs> you guys good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys are a little quiet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Nice. I'm thinking. I'm just thinking about Zelda. <laughs> well, so is Yoshi P. Apparently, because yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a uh, meme going around that uh... I'm taking a page out of Yoshi P.'s book and playing it right now while did we're you, talking. Did you see what he said at the beginning of the live stream? He said something about how he's just not feeling it today because he wants to go play his Switch and play Zelda. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was like not in the mood to talk about 14, and then uh, uh, Fox Claw next to him said like, "Yeah, me too. Same, same." Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, "Oh God!" Like, <laughs> they just, don't, they, don't, just, they like... just want to play Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, my fr I told my friend about that and he's like that's adorable he had his mm -hmm. switch on the stream too like, yeah <laughs> it was so funny seeing Yoshi P of all people be like I'm gonna play Zelda hey he's mm -hmm. he's uh, exploring the ninth reflection you know that whole theory that I had a few podcasts ago <laughs> I still I still think that my theory is cor is possibly correct honestly what Skyloft or I for the sick guy left thing. Yeah. Like, just because it's like they mentioned the Demon King, we're like, are we bringing back Demise? Oh, you're right. Well, they call Ganondorf that sometimes, don't they? That's true. Yeah. And he's he's coming back. Like they showed him, he's not. He's no longer dehydrated. He's rehydrated, Ganon. He is dead. <laughs> Dude, have you seen like pictures of him? Yeah, I have. He's very rehydrated. He is thick as hell. Yeah, everybody's everybody's calling him like Dad Ganon. Dad Ganon. <laughs> I, 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 like, I can't. I can't blame him. Dad Ganon. Oh my god. He's, he's, dad, he's, he's Dad Ganon now. Like he's just he's just like Link's dad. <laughs> he's Link's stepdad. <laughs> Father, apologies. <laughs> Father. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, that would that would be it for our six point four discussion. I think between the last episode of this podcast, if uh, if you're listening and you haven't listened to the last episode, last episode we did cover the last live letter as well, and that live letter that was live letter seventy six uh, was where like I think the meat of the details came for uh, six four, and then uh, this one we got the you know the second half or really more just elaborating on what they talked about last time as well as the job adjustments, which really were not that much. They said they're not planning any major job adjustments, um, at least not for a very long time, uh, probably not until seven point oh. Um, and then uh, these these ones, like I said, with the radius on um, uh, party buffs and the paladin one for. Um, not doing you know, uh, atonement, not doing interrupt. Um, those are pretty much that was pretty much it <laughs> for the most part. Um, <clears throat> so lots of content coming uh, six point four five, and then of course that's going to affect Azure with our uh, return of Azure Pandemonium Tuesdays. Like I mentioned earlier, that is going to be a prime time and a late night event. Uh, so look forward to that on Tuesdays, and that's going to replace our current Azure 24 Man Tuesdays Mist of the Realm, which currently runs Eglia and Euphorcine for just another week or so, I think. Uh, let me look at the calendar really fast while I'm talking. That is going to be only one more week, so next week. Next week, the week uh, May the 16th is the very last Eglia and Euphorcine run, and then that's going to be on hiatus. If you didn't join us for that, uh, don't worry, you're not totally missing out because later this year, we already know that the third and final finale Mists of the Realm raid is going to be out, and that's when we're going to do Mists of the Realm Trilogy for a number of months until 7.0 comes out. And that's going to be the big, the big, big, like big kahuna raids where we get 20-something people together and, and run uh, the big groups of the finale where we do all three. So I know that doesn't take a super long time because the first two become tremendously easier and faster when we get to the third one. Um, so if you were here during the time we did near raids, or or even further back, Evilies trilogy, or even further back, Void Arc trilogy, uh, it'll be like that when we do all three. So that's towards the end of the year. So if you didn't run, you foreseen Aglia with us. Uh, you'll have another chance to run uh, with the FC with that. Getting us getting the chance to see an all Azure Alliance run is uh, pretty awesome, and it usually yeah, lasts quite that, a while that, until it starts dying. That's always pretty special. <laughs> 
it'll it'll die out like it is right now. Like right now, we're seeing one to two parties doing it, and that's just because we're so far into six three that everybody's got mostly everything they need, and then whoever comes are folks either supporting or newbies that are unlocking and clearing it, or folks that still need to gear a few jobs. But um, but you know, usually the first uh, couple months we're gonna see some big twenty four man Azure runs uh, with those, and uh, if lucky, maybe even more people than that. Um, and of course, uh, new patches are always known to bring new rewards to Wondrous Wednesdays, Treasure Thursdays rewards. So when you go to actually do those those uh, content, even if it's not on Wednesday or Thursday, the Treasure Maps and the Wondrous Tales journals will have better rewards or new rewards as well, I should say. And of course, the new tome will be added to maps. Uh, so you can get comedy tomes on Thursdays and also uh, Friday nights with our new Friday Night Treasure Fights event. Um, that's probably going right now while we're talking, isn't it? <laughs> or close to it. Um, uh, they should have started about an hour ago. Okay, yeah. So they're... Uh, Wait, what's our hour now? Only about Friday 45 minutes. minutes. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, you'll be getting the uh, 90 tomes there. Or if you're in the the level 90 party uh, at uh, Thursday, and don't forget, uh, if you're listening and you're in our community and uh, you want to join in on Thursday and you want to do old maps, we are doing uh, old group maps, starting with Heaven's War Dragon Skin maps all the way up to uh, the Shadowbringers Zoner Skin uh, maps. We we see a lot of people bring Gazelle skins from uh, Stormblood, uh, which lead to the Hidden Canals of Uznair. And also those thief maps <laughs> that they drop, and there are some serious rewards. We had the biggest treasure Thursdays I think ever recorded that I know of uh, yeah. a couple weeks what? back. How ridiculous was that, oh, Misty? It's like a lot. I don't even remember now. Like thir- Oh, it was six like mil. six mil, six point five, seven mil, something like that. Yeah. For for, I for down the, somewhere for the deposit, which is fifty percent fundraising for the. No, the deposit was like three something. No, the, the was, deposit was. No, oh, no, you're right. The deposit was six. No, you're right. You're right. The deposit was six. You're right. You're right. Half of it was made, and yeah, it was like yeah, twelve it was... something made <laughs> for, you're right. for the whole you're right. Yeah, was, or thirteen mil for the F, or for uh, f- you know thirteen mil total with a six point five mil deposit is what it was, and it was just really insane. And uh, so, so the the what we what was called the lower level map group, which is map levels uh, sixty to eighty. Um, are doing really, really well. And, um, of course, shout out to our scout, Shibby, who's been a huge uh, part of keep, of making that happen. And, uh, you know, and, and, and Miss and others uh, who have worked with her uh, has just been doing a phenomenal job. Uh, it's, it, it was a... The maps. Hmm? There, there were other people. There was Scout Sergeant Shibby, okay. Scout Lenoa. Right, right. Uh, and then Andromeda, Shadow, and I forget who the other member was who helped us test the concept was. Okay. Well, everybody that has helped with that uh, has made that a reality for Azure. For the first time in our history, we've actually been able to say that we are running all of the major group maps. Um, we did we did start out with some ARR stuff, um, and they might be you know like good entry type points, but so are the other ones, and they have big rewards and they have instances attached to them, and some major loot. So um, you know if you're if you're in that 60 to 80 range, and you or even if you're 90 and you want to do older stuff, um, just remember that on Thursdays we have that secondary chance for grouping, and if you're not there right on grouping time. Uh, don't let that stop you from asking to get in the party because a lot of times there is space open. Uh, we'll have either one party with space open or multiple parties that all have like mm-hmm. one space because we only need five people uh, to you know to to make sure that the map runs are really really uh, well done and that they're not lost. So <clears throat> um, I actually uh, got to go got to see a few people who have never experienced a thief map before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when we yeah. were running with Misty's group that week, it was, <laughs> I think we had, what, six first-timers into the yep. Thief map? Yeah. And then all of us got first-time completion of a Thief mm-hmm. map? Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that's very rare to get to the end of that. And those are the maps that drop uh, from Stormblood maps, the, and it leads to an underwater location. And then that leads to a uh, guaranteed portal to the uh, the, the, ver- like the very hidden canals <laughs> of Uznair. And that's where you get the three doors instead of the two. The, the, only the bottom thing in the board game drops 500k. Yeah. 
It's crazy. It's really crazy. That one's got the biggest rewards of them all, but it's really hard to get into. So a lot of times what we like to do is like thief maps will be allowed uh, for the party, but usually held to the end. Uh, and then we'll just go down them. But we also try to do maps in an order so that way folks that um, say you're lower level and you join it, we're not going to be doing a Shadowbringers map first. It's going to be starting with the lowest level ones and then going up per round. Um, that way, yeah. everybody that attends it, if you're lower level to you know around 60 or 70, um, you'll definitely have a chance. So definitely, uh, definitely come out and join that. And uh, we did start our Gwibber farms for Mega Mountathon, so that is uh, that is going. Uh, we've you know it is a little slower because these fights have mechanics. We ask that those showing up do know the fights, but we have been seeing uh, a slow and steady increase of Gwibbers getting one. So that's good. And uh, we did put our Super Azure Slayer Sunday event on a hiatus, and uh, that's that's just on hiatus for now, and mostly due to interest in non-crystalline conflict, <laughs> and especially you know we got everybody grinding for uh, the last uh, ranks in the current PvP series. So um, that is like that for now. And uh, remember, if you want to see the log from the previous assembly, that's up on our YouTube as well in the archives, although it's split into three because of connection issues. But um, we do have our upcoming assembly tomorrow. Um, not 100% sure if this episode will be actually fully edited and out by tomorrow. Um, but, uh, but you know, if, uh, if it is and you're listening to this, please come to the assembly. We've got... Uh, some oh, you know what? My bad. The assembly's on Sunday. <laughs> it's on council meeting this tomorrow. Okay, scratch that. Uh, we do have our assembly on Sunday, so if this is up by then, uh, definitely come check out the Azure Grand Assembly or the next one that you possibly can because we have some awesome raffles, awesome raffles planned uh, with a few prizes uh, for members that are in attendance who win the raffles. And uh, you also get to see announcements live, and we'll also be live streaming it as well and posting the archive later. There's nothing like uh, nothing like being there live. It's a good experience. Um, and I, I know that, uh, what, what was that glitch? <clears throat> Never mind. Very good. I was going to um, ask it, but okay. Then, sure, but then you answered it. I was like, "Oh, uh, wait, it's Sunday." Yeah, it is Sunday. It is Sunday. <laughs> yeah. um, usually, it's Saturday. Uh, we didn't want to have to put it on Sunday, but it, things got kind of smushed together because um, we had the live letter this morning. Uh, this this is Friday, the twelfth. Uh, so the live letter was this morning, and then we had to schedule a council meeting prior to our assemblies because we like to make sure that the council has a chance to fully talk with as many members as possible of it in VC, um, which. Um, you know, it gives us a chance to come up with any last minute things that will go towards the assembly. And we'll usually do that on a Friday, but we really needed to get this podcast episode out um, and talk about the live letter and then uh, have our meeting tomorrow and then have our assembly on Sunday. But that'll be two hours on uh, Sunday, the 14th at uh, 4 p.m. Pacific. That's 7 p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. Central. Um, and I know that, uh, a couple, I think a couple of you had something you guys wanted to mention, uh, some games that you guys have been playing or things that have come no. out recently right. that we to talk about. We, yes. we, are, we are a little bit over one hour right now, so, uh, maybe we just have a little segment and talk about that before we end. Um, Zelda fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the by by the next episode would be really good to have a Tears of the Kingdom like impressions chat. Oh yeah, because it's only been out for a number of hours at the moment. Yep, and the guy started also. streaming it like right out the gate. Yeah, <laughs> I, I jump scared glitchy when I let her know that it was ready. Yeah, she played the screaming goat noise at me, I think. Or was it an air horn? It was the air horn. Uh, uh, tabletop JRPG you wanted to talk about, Mist? Oh, um... What was it? Uh, Break. Break, yeah. I, I know so little about the beyond what I just shared with you guys in the chat. It just looks absolutely hysterical. It's Break with two exclamation points, by the way. Yep, yeah, it's B-R-E-A-K exclamation exclamation. <laughs> just the class names alone are amazing. Sage, Heretic, Raider, Champion, Sneak, Factotum, Battle Princess, Murder Princess. Murder Princess. Two different ones. Murder Princess. <laughs> I one's mean murder, one. One's <laughs> yeah. 
mean, yeah. Uh, also, anyone who's in the Maryland area, come to Balticon! I also have been playing uh, Honkai Star Rail, which is a which is made by the creators of Genshin Impact. Uh, so it's <clears throat> I've been having a blast with that. There's mm. like it gives you like a lot of lore, like right yes. off the bat. Yes, it has been it has been really great. It's, there's but... so much lore. My heart has been with Battle Network Legacy Collection because 20 long years, our national nightmare is over. We finally got the remaster <laughs> it deserves. And I, think, and I think it's... I don't... I haven't checked recently, but I remember at one point it was on track to be the fastest selling Mega Man game of all time. Not just not just Battle Network game. Mega Man. Mega Man. I had one of them on Game Boy Advance and it was pretty fun. That series was my childhood. Isn't like, it like kind of a like good just, example of what happens when you put a, a good franchise as a as a turn based game? Um Right? It's turn based, right? No, no, it's, it's not, not? turn-based. I'm thinking of a different no. one. It or is it kind... tactics? Is it like a tactic style one? Because no, I, I, no. I thought I played a, uh, a like a Mega Man NT game that was uh, it has like three lanes and it was like turn-based. I thought. Okay, yeah, it, it is kind of turn-based, but also not. I'm only really. going by memory here, so it's been a long time. Okay. Because what happens is you have <laughs> you have your bat. It's a normal RPG, but then instead of just playing a normal Mega Man game like mm -hmm. platformers, you have the three by three grid of combat, which is kind of turn based actually, only because like you take turns selecting your battleships and then mm -hmm. using them, which kind of turn based, but it's kind of real time as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alrighty. Mist, you said something about um, the Stellaris DLC and Galactic. Crisis, I've actually Galactic not Crisis. had chance to get into um, Stellaris DLC. I know Shoes has. I was hoping he'd be here to talk about it. Oh, okay. Well, maybe next, maybe next uh, episode. I've actually been busy in the Stellaris modding dens lately because I've become like engrossed in a project to try to fix the name list for frigates. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still trying to make that script work. It's not so far. <laughs> I, I think the number of successes is now like one game actually launched successfully and seven crashes out right on launch. Ah. Uh, but no, for GC4, uh, those who are familiar with the Galactic Civ series, they just released four from the closed beta into, into early access open beta. Uh, there's still a fair number of features that feel half-built and missing, but that's to be expected to you deal know, with a beta build. But even then, it's definitely a big UI improvement upon 3. Um, there's still some features I think they need to add in further before it's a completed game. Without giving too much away for those who actually want to check it out, uh, currently the campaigns are not playable. And at least as of the current version of the beta I have, only the Terran Alliance is playable out of the box. But they introduced this bizarre tool called Alien GPT. Oh no. You literally give it one or two sentences and it creates an alien empire for you. 
Interesting. And you can save those <laughs> alien empires, and they will appear in ga later games against you, possibly. Oh, wow. And people have started already posting their alien GPT-generated empires in the Steam community, and some of them are completely off the rails. Sentient chocolate ice cream. What? Yes! Do I need to say more? Interesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yep. Uh, actually, I th there was one I saw posted the other day that made me immediately think, okay, Glitch obviously made this. Oh? I showed, I, 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 I showed it to uh, Nora the other day. So where did I put that picture? Did, is it still in uh, the other chat? Probably. You have pinked my instruments, Misty. Just don't tell me the community took it down because of the quality guidelines or something. I don't know. Alright, can you talk about trying to find it? <laughs> I, I have uh, found something interesting in Minecraft, so I will... Uh... Oh, oh, no. Ah, 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 ah. Bitchy's in danger. Yeah, I'm in danger. <laughs> How did you know who's in danger? How did we not right. know you were um, in danger? I think that about wraps it up, then, if you guys are ready to end here. Uh, I could more of about Zelda lore, but I, I thought me... we were limited on time, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wanted oh. to... I found it. What'd you find? The I... image of Scotty Show Glitchy. Ask what uh, your thoughts were on the lore of everything, Rika. The lore of Zelda? Yeah, what do you think of like oh, where yes, where does that. it where does this game fit in lore? Feline Empire, yeah. <laughs> it what Tears of the Kingdom? In Tears of the Kingdom, yeah. Uh, well, as far as I know, it well okay, so it's a sequel to Breath of the Wild. It's yeah, we know sequel. it's a direct sequel to yeah. Breath, yeah. Breath of the Wild. Where does Breath of the Wild fit? Is it early or is it later? That is always the Isn't question. Isn't Breath of the Wild <laughs> the end of the collapse timeline? I figured it was, yeah. So if that's the it, case, then Tears of the Kingdom would probably be the furthest one down the line. Hmm. In the collapse timeline. But what made... We're, we're, trying to figure, yeah, we're still trying to figure out, like... Aren't we trying to figure out what made it collapse? In the first place? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Didn't, we didn't know that from Breath of the Wild or from... I don't know. I haven't beat that game yet. Oh, okay. oh look at me. Um, well, neither have I. So, <laughs> <It's> probably... uh... <laughs> I know there's probably somebody listening to this that's like cringing as we uh, talk about not finishing. I have not played a Legend of Zelda game <laughs> since the Golden Cartridge. Oh my we god! The original the Golden Cartridge. That, that's all. That was just the beginning. <laughs> I mean, I, a... I have, but uh, but I haven't fin I haven't finished Breath of the Wild. I've just I've got an open file on it because uh, I, I never all switched Zelda when it came out. Fans. So we need like, to force Misty to play this game. Lenoa, not super do the high thing. on my priority list, but uh, I will finish it eventually. I have the guide and everything, so I'm gonna you know I like to do everything, so I'll probably do all the shrines and all that, and then uh, then move on to Tears of the Kingdom. Sometime, maybe one of these years, but <laughs> like got a, got a lot of stuff going on. We got a lot of a lot of patch content coming out, and things to look forward to in fourteen. And then uh, I'm uh, I'm on Final Fantasy V now uh, on my free time, just leveling the jobs and uh, nice. just finishing up uh, FF15 Comrades uh, in case it ever goes fully offline, because that's a thing that happens eventually to some games. And it, and uh, there's some pretty cool fights in that game actually. I mean, actually, getting to fight Bahamut and all that in 15 is pretty cool. Um, and then I think Omega is like one of the last ones. It's pretty, pretty gnarly. Um, but yeah, um, I, I think that wraps it up for, for this episode. Mm -hmm. So would like to thank everybody who listened to our episode. Uh, hopefully we are, we're able to help you get a little bit more filled in on this content coming to 14. Uh, if you're in the Azure Infinitum community, don't forget, uh, you can always, uh, outside of our podcast, you can check our summaries of our, or streams, archives of the uh, Grand Assemblies that we do. Uh, a lot of similar information, but 
the podcast gives us a chance to kind of talk to you about it and go over uh, things that may be in between, you know, releases like the patch information in between assemblies uh, or talk about uh, recent updates and changes. Uh, don't forget, you can always register at azureinfinitum.com. It is not mandatory as part of our community, but you may uh, make a profile that allows you to list characters from different games you play, uh, sign up on official wing rosters on the website. Um, you're also able to enter online contests when we host them, use our forums, and a lot more. Uh, it's definitely recommend registering. Um, you just don't forget that you have to join Guild Tag, the service that we use, and then also join the website. So a lot of people think they're registered, but they've only joined Guild, Guild Tag in Azure. Um, we are doing a new thing I wanted to mention real quick before we end, where uh, free trial players in 14 can actually become honorary community members by joining the Discord. Um, so since they cannot reply back in game, what I have been doing is I've actually been working on recruiting folks that are, that, you know, plan to subscribe or could subscribe and can still be a part of our discord community. Technically Azure is open to anybody. You don't have to be in 14 to be a, a member of Azure by being a member of our discord and our website. Uh, so if you are listening to this and you have not subscribed yet to 14, uh, just know that you can access our resources in discord. Uh, talk to us, follow along, and even uh, show up for a couple things that we might be doing when there's an Azure Day or other fun stuff. So um, we do hope that folks subscribe so they can actually get the full experience and join the FC. Um, but like I said, if you are not in 14 or not subscribed yet, uh, you can still join our Discord and our website and be a member. Um, if you're listening to this on uh, YouTube or anywhere that's not within our community links, <clears throat> Don't forget uh, azureinfinitum.com as well as the newly launched um, azure-net.com, uh, which is our old RN uh, Runner on Network site that has been reborn um, as a news media site that also covers community content as well. Um, this also helps with exposure and bringing more folks into our Azure community and uh, gives mm. people kind of a chance to uh, read some of our writing outside of uh, just our regular you know, regular stuff, 14 podcasts and uh, community content that we have, um, as well as our um, wing that we've got going on with Destiny right now. has a lot of awesome stuff we talk about on the podcast uh, from time to time. And uh, there's a real big update coming in the future, as well as the new Destiny season, what we've gotten a preview of, uh, which looks pretty neat. Um, I think maybe by the next podcast, we can talk a little bit more about that as well, and then go further into depth with maybe some of our... our uh, Zelda gushing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, I'm sure we'll have much more um, impressions to talk about of that as well. Um, but uh, yes, uh, thank you guys for listening. And uh, I believe this has been, let me see, hold on. I'm going to edit this part at the very end here. Just want to double check on one thing really quick before we sign off. Thank you, Rika, for having us. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Always fun being here. Of course. Yep. I'm sorry for my shenanigans. Is... <laughs> oh, your shenanigans make things fun. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And, and also, uh, yeah. Uh, wouldn't the, the website, the website, the new website, the not the new website, but the news network website oh. reborn? Azure, wouldn't that Azure wouldn't network. that be a website reborn? <laughs> oh, website reborn. Oh, my God. Indeed. Uh, it was reborn. Indeed. indeed. Yep, indeed. <laughs> so, yeah, this was episode 19, and uh, we'll be uh, my Christmas list. recording episode 20 in a couple weeks. And we'll have the podcast back on track. We took uh, 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 two weeks off of the podcast uh, for a few reasons, but it is back on track. And uh, you can expect episode 20 to be out in a couple weeks. And episode 19, this episode, will be out uh, pretty soon. But by the time you're listening to this, uh, we'll, we'll have had, we'll have had uh, a couple days across the weekend to get through our uh, meetings and assemblies and such. And then uh, this is episode 19, so it'll be out uh, the start of the week. So thank you all for listening. Thank you all for listening. And I'll see you on the next episode. Yay! Yay!